Hi, everyone. My name is Hugo, and today I'd like to talk to you about uh, Power Pages general availability, right? So, so far, we've already talked about how if you wanted to build apps in Power Apps, you had to do internal apps using Canvas and model apps. And if you wanted to do external websites, you only had access to Power Apps portals. Uh, but what we have announced as of, uh, well, I guess it was available on October 10th, but we announced it uh, on October 12th, is Microsoft Power Pages is available. And so now you can actually build websites that are connected to your Dataverse data and your Power Platform environment in general um, and do some really, really cool stuff, right? The one thing I just want to make sure that we are all clear is that Power Pages is really designed for the Fusion team, the whole family, right? This is not, like if you think about it, we're not trying to allow just anybody to randomly create a public website uh, that has access to your data. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it easy for you to connect to your data. And so there's a few things that are available here. Uh, and we've covered some of these. So I'm going to try to focus on what's new. Uh, so we have that new fancy, uh, you know, uh, editing studio, which allows you to view the navigation and edit the navigation. And you can actually add pages from there. Once you add pages, um, let's just, there you go. Let's just add a page. You, know, you can add a page and you can pick the template you want. You can pick custom templates as well. But once you've added the pages, then you'll have sections in your page. And you can actually add various sections. Uh, so let's just show you what I'm talking about here. So you can add sections to the page. And the sections will allow you to control things like the layout, right? So how many columns do I want? One, two, three columns, one third, two thirds, uh, spacer, and stuff like that. And then once I have a section created, so let's just add one then I can actually pick the bunch of components that are available to me, so right, like text, buttons, images, things like that. Uh, but wait, if you order now, you also have the ability to select some additional stuff. Now, a little secret here, or maybe it's not a secret, you'll see there's like the three dots on the right there. Right there, where is it? Come on, right there. So that actually gives you some extra features and you can see there's lots of room there for more stuff. So uh, keep an eye out for new stuff to come. But one of the cool things that's available now in Power Pages that we didn't have in the preview version is that if you go to, there you go, if you go to the corner there of uh, the page, actually, let's just show you the other pages. We're we'll going go faster here. So again, you can always see the preview of the content of the page. Uh, and that's really what we call what you see is what you get, right? And this whole ability to preview uh, the stuff that you are doing. Now, let's see if I can show you this super quickly. Uh, so if you go to a page, you can actually control some settings of the page, right? And we'll skip moving stuff into navigation and stuff like that. But in the page settings, there's one thing that we didn't have again in the preview that we want to show you now is that you have the ability to control who can see what pages and based on what roles you've created. And you see we have some standard roles like authenticated users and administrators. We also have custom roles. You can create custom security roles so that you can control again who should see what. Now, there's also the styling uh, space. In the styling space, we've already talked about the styling space where it allows you to pick themes and edit themes and fonts and colors and stuff like that. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. The one thing that is really cool now is that you can actually go into the styling space and manage your cascading style sheet. And you can see here, there's already three uh, bootstrap style sheets that are applied with a theme and a portal basic theme. You can upload your own custom style sheet. Again, I'm not expecting makers to be uh, you know, who are just getting a new, uh, becoming familiar with, uh, you know, CSS and JavaScript and HTML to do that. But if you have a corporate uh, style guideline that you want to follow, it's a good idea to upload your own custom CSS. Again, it's bootstrap, so it's standard. Um, we also have the data workspace, and we've talked about the data workspace in the past, but you know, if for those of you who are familiar with Dataverse, we can do the same stuff that we would go in a Dataverse you know, environment, go create tables and things like that. But here I can do that directly from within the data workspace to control what data I want to show within my website. Let's go to the setup workspace. 
in a setup workspace, you know, we've got a whole bunch of options that we can do. But there's a few things I wanted to show. One of the things is that we now have the ability from here to be able to do things like custom domains, uh, CDN, CDN, sorry, for faster delivery of content, IP restrictions, and things like that. The new go to go live checklist is actually a checklist, obviously, of things that you can do uh, before getting ready. And I'm not going to go through all the checklists. I just want to show you something else really cool. Um, right here, so we have the ability here to, here, I'm going to just customize this quickly. Right here, we have the ability to create progressive web applications from, from the site. And so you might say, what's a progressive web application? Well, if you've actually used Twitter, Uber, uh, you know, uh, what else, Flipkart, and so on and so forth, you've probably used a progressive web application. It's a website that's hosted as an app. All right, I've got like what, two minutes left. Let me see if I can wow you a little bit with this new cool feature. I can actually go to a page now. And let's say I look at this page, and it's like, yeah, it's, it looks kind of cool, but let me preview it. And it's kind of boring, right? It's missing some fun stuff. I want to do some animation. I want to do something. Um, well, guess what? Now we have the ability to actually use Visual Studio Code and GitHub and all this fun stuff to integrate. I'm going to go to a cool site called Animista. And Animista allows me to find animations. And uh, really, if you've ever, ever been there, you'll see, or if you haven't been there, you'll see how awesome it is. So Animista.net. You go there, you pick an animation that suits your needs. And then uh, let's see if I can speed this up a little bit. You pick an animation that suits your needs, and then you basically click on the copy button, right? Copy the CSS class. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my page. I'm going to click on edit code right here, which is going to open Visual Studio Code for me. And it gives me a standard disclaimer just to scare me, right? It's going to go to Visual Studio Code. And then from here, it's going to actually give me access to the CSS, the JavaScript, and the HTML for that page. And I have full control over that, right? Uh, so CSS for the style, JavaScript for any you know code logic that's client side, and of course, the HTML itself. And then if I kind of, I'm going to, kind of skip this a little bit and copy. I copy the code that I just pasted from my Animista site. I'll go copy the, the keyframes, which is the animation from CSS. And then if I go save that, so I save that like I would normally would, and I go back to my site, I'm going to get something that looks like this. Come on. You can do it. There you go. So now I go back in sync. I preview my page, preview my page. It knows that I'm trying to speed up now, that's why. So I'm gonna preview my page quickly. And uh, when I can preview it, you'll see that that fancy animation that I copied and pasted from Admesta is going to be now available. So when I mouse over a card, come on, mouse over a card, you can do it. There you go, mouse over a card. I have that subtle animation that I've just created. So again, that was a super quick tour of some of the new features that we have available in Power Pages. Power Pages is available. There's a new licensing model. We'll talk about it next time. But uh, go forth in Webify. That's it for me. Back to you, David. Excellent. Thank you, Hugo.